Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I present my model of the Firefly Alpha for my small rockets pack. And I believe it is a fairly accurate one because they had a lot of numbers in their payload user's guide, and I had a payload user's guide. Um, there is a 0.1 ton discrepancy in my final mass compared to what they say. They said the gross liftoff weight was uh, 54.12 tons. I have 54.02 tons. That may be fairing mass, or it may be the RCS system on the second stage, which they did not specify. That's the only thing they didn't specify. We have the thrust of the engines in vacuum. We have the ISP of the engines in vacuum. We have the dry mass of the first stage. I assume that's including the engines as part of the dry mass, and that seems to track. And uh, we have the dry mass of the second stage. We have the length of everything. We even have the pressure of the tanks. Uh, so we basically, uh, we don't exactly have the ISP at sea level for the engines. That's not relevant for the second stage, but it is relevant for the first stage. Uh, so uh, they gave the 295.6 and I extrapolated the 178 that we have there. So that's one thing. But other than that, uh, we should be pretty good. It might be closer than uh, that. It might be that they're very, very sea level optimized. But anyway, um, the engine models are fairly simple. Let me just put it together. Uh, let's, uh, let's just move all that off. This uh, payload adapter does not come with the the rocket it comes with the small rockets pack though so but the second stage does have a control unit in so let's just pull it apart so all these parts can be found by typing in firefly in the search field and then they're here i don't know why everything else seems to come up with firefly but uh here we have those and then the lightning engine and then this the reaver engine down here so uh, the second stage tank goes like that and then the fairings. I actually uh, sort of used the interior. Uh, I got a new bunch of textures paid for them, by the way. Uh, but these are actually supposed to be like cargo racks inside the ISS. But it sort of makes an OK texture for the inside of a payload fairing. So I decided to use it. And yep, that's how that looks. And then the lightning engine which is a 70 kilonewton engine using kerosene and oxygen. And the fuel is based on the burn time. Uh, the burn time was actually five minutes and 14 seconds in their payload user's guide, but I think they would have a little bit of extra. They might have a little bit more extra. Maybe that 0.1 ton is actually uh, more burn time for this stage, I don't know. Uh, so then we have an interstage, and then we have the first stage, and then, uh, for both the lightning engine and the first stage engines, I didn't have very good images. Uh, they were just part of an overall schematic of the rocket. So not a very detailed image of those engines. Uh, on the launch, these were covered up by lots of insulation. So kept it real simple. And maybe some other images will pop up. Uh, there's, there is this sort of center thing in a lot of the images on the payload user's guide, even though they didn't seem to be during the launch. I don't know what that was supposed to be in the payload user's guide. The payload user's guide specified four engines arrayed like this, but then it almost looked like they had five. So uh, there's something in the center there that I didn't understand. So it's there anyway, and that is the Firefly Alpha. Now, it is carrying its absolute maximum payload. Well. Actually, it might be able to carry a little bit more than this, but basically it's one ton. And we don't really get the 9,500 meters per second that I would most like to get to orbit from Cape Canaveral, but maybe everything will work out with the right trajectory. We'll see. So let's just try it out and see if it works. Otherwise, you know, the numbers seem correct. Now we don't have an RCS system on the second stage. You'll have to put that in again little procedural tanks and the the shear strut engine pack has a variety of RCS ports that you can use and that's just because that's the one thing that the payload users guide did not indicate what kind of propellant the RCS uses so it could be helium because they use that to pressurize the stage uh, it could be other things 
but yep, that was one thing that was not specified. So let's time warp so that the light is a little bit better. So I sort of made a carbon composite body. When you scroll out, uh, sometimes at certain distances it looks a little bit patchier, but it's sort of like that. Anyway, throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. I'm not gonna try out the one engine off failure, and that's because the problems that, that you would have with that in real life are not present in Kerbal, especially wind gusts. Uh, we don't have wind gusts in Kerbal, so probably it would still work out even with one engine out, and so that's not very important. I also have not configured them so that they have one axis gimbling. Right now they gimbal on two axes, the engines do, but Firefly noted that their engines only have one axis gimbling and so that would be another limitation to control if one engine was out, but I don't have that right now. That, that can be done, that can be done. I don't know how much pain and suffering you guys want out of these, but... Uh, yeah, you'd have to be able to figure out exactly how to orient the engines. So there it goes. And I decided to launch from Cape Canaveral instead of Vandenberg because I wanted to test the maximum payload. They're not particularly efficient engines. Uh, 296 basically for the first stage in vacuum and then 322 in vacuum for the upper stage. But for the most part, I'm making these things for the the RP2000 tech tree, and so they'll probably be relatively cheaper then, and also come a little bit earlier than some of the other small rocket engines. Now they had the whole flight profile, and the first stage ends at 69 kilometers. Two, one. Well, a little bit more than 69, but alright. Technically, the stage separation and ignition are separate, but uh, it's within 5 seconds, so... So yeah, the first stage goes for 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Which it did. And fairing separation is at 116 kilometers, and they said uh, 3 minutes and 35 seconds, so... Okay, 3 minutes 35, we're a little bit low, but I'll separate them. Let's pitch up a little bit to compensate. We're about 2 kilometers lower than they wanted to be. There is a control unit in here, so if you don't want to use this payload adapter and want to use a payload adapter from some other mod like procedural fairings, that is possible. The Delta V seems rather tight right now, so... You'll have to see. One thing it has going for it is it's fairly thin rockets, so not that much drag. But the thin rocket thing also makes it prone to the gusts. Which is why, of course, uh, Falcon 9 often has to delay because of upper level winds. Okay, final phase of the launch here. Everything has been fairly simple. The question is whether we can carry this one ton payload or not, whether I got the trajectory good enough or not, basically. Uh, okay, yep, we are in orbit, barely. <laughs> so, uh, 224 by 199, uh, we extended all the fuel there, uh, or all the usable fuel anyway. Uh, I assume the dry masses counted the unusable fuel. Uh, so, yep. One ton payload successful, uh, but barely. And we do need to think about the 0.1 tons that are unaccounted for and the RCS system, both of which may be related. So, yes. But there you have it, Firefly Alpha. Uh, that will be added to the small rockets pack, and I'll link that in the video description. So with that, 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.